Hello and welcome back to the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast brought to you by the last man standing with Loserpool. Dot com. As ever, I'm your host, Harry Simeon. On today's short edition, uh, we're going to be touching on Unai Emery, the manager. Should we be concerned uh, by what we've seen so far from Unai Emery? Or is it uh, a premature panic? Let me know what you guys think in the comments too. I'll be sharing my thoughts on that subject. Got a couple of fantastic listener questions. And we'll also be touching on the FIFA ratings. I know a lot of you are FIFA heads, love the game, play it a lot. And uh, we'll be looking into some of the rankings that the Arsenal play. Players, uh, have been given and let me know whether you agree or disagree with those. Now, I'm going to start off uh, by talking about Unai Emery. Now, I've been on various podcasts um, over the course of last season and this season expressing my concerns about Unai Emery. The same concerns that people are now all of a sudden waking up to. And I'm not sort of trying to say I told you so, but what I'm saying is when I initially said it, People were having a go at me, digging me out, calling me every name under the sun because I dared to question the mighty Unai Emery. Well, now lots of you are starting to understand those concerns. And in time, I believe that you'll share those concerns with me too. And this is not me calling for the manager to be sacked now. That's not what I want. Unai Emery needs this second season. There's no question about that. The first season was was a bit of a given. Um, at the start but the way things panned out Arsenal should have qualified for the Champions League because the teams around them were poor the circumstances all sort of fell into place everything was in place for Arsenal to finish in that top four and unfortunately we didn't manage it so um, I think people were absolutely right to be disappointed with the way the team was managed towards the back end of last season I think that people are absolutely right to question whether or not Unai Emery is the long-term solution. That doesn't mean that just because you question someone that you want them sacked. Now, we were all complaining before about how no manager at Arsenal, or no manager, I mean Arsene Wenger, had no accountability. Nobody ever put the heat on him, um, you know, within the club. It was only the fans that essentially turned on him and people, uh, you know, were getting upset as to why he was allowed to get away with certain things. Well, this is the same situation. For me, Arsenal's progress under Unai Emery has been very limited. And the statistics and the facts and the stats and everything else prove that. Now, you can argue that Arsenal have progressed a little bit. And and if you did make that argument, I'd agree with you. But overall, in terms of the way Arsenal have progressed, it's not been as much as people would have expected. And, you know, we have brought in a, a lot of players. And I think over the course of this season... I'm going to stick my neck out on the line and say that the same issues that plagued us last year, i.e. the defence, will prove to be a problem again because it's not been addressed. It's not been addressed in the way it should have been addressed. And lots of people will sit there and say, oh, you know, but Holding's on his way back, a player who has shown some some potential, but ultimately has only played half a season in, in the Arsenal first team. They'll talk about Hector Bellerin, another player with bags of potential, really exciting going forward. But is he going to come in and solidify that defence? Not in my opinion. Kieran Tierney, brilliant reviews. A player who, you know, really impressed up in Scotland. He's been compared to Robertson of Liverpool a lot. Lots of Scottish fans saying that he's better than Robertson. So, you know, of course we're going to be excited. And that's, you know, completely understandable. But again, we, we don't know how he's going to fit into that team. We know that... Arsenal have had defensive issues for quite some time. I'd have hoped that last season Unai Emery would have been able to address that. He didn't address it. Um, he's made a few signings this summer and fingers crossed it, it will improve. But right now I haven't seen any signs of that improvement. So you'll have to forgive me for being sceptical on that. And, and I'm going to stick my neck out on the line here and say that come the end of the season, Arsenal's defensive um, you know, record in terms of the amount of goals conceded will not be um, much if better at all, to that of last season. So that's where my concerns come regarding the manager. It's not that I don't like him. It's not that I want him to go. It's not that I don't think he deserves this season. But for me, if you're sitting there blindly supporting him and saying, oh, actually, you know, he, he's got another free ride, then for me, you know, you haven't got the club's best interests at heart. This club need to get back in the Champions League. This club need to be competing at the very top level again. And... You know, the longer we stay in the Europa League, the the, the bigger the gap's going to get between us and the Man Cities and the Liverpools of this world. And, 
you know, your ambitions might be to get back in the top four. And that's my initial ambition. But of course, the long term goal is to, to be competing for the biggest titles where Arsenal should be. And do I at this moment in time believe that Unai Emery is 100 percent without doubt the man to deliver that? I, I, I don't. I don't believe that at this moment in time. And I, I'm happy to be proven wrong. I want to be proven wrong. I want Arsenal to get back to where they belong. But based on what we've seen so far, I'd be lying if I said that I'm totally convinced. And that's just my take on it. Now, I've got a couple of questions uh, from some of you guys uh, that have been coming through throughout the day. We put a little tweet out earlier on. Um, so I'm going to just refer uh, to one of those questions. It was a really, really good question, um, I thought. And um, one that is definitely worth discussing. Uh, let me just bring that up. It is from uh, the brilliant Claude uh, from Arsenal Fan TV. Uh, let's have a quick look at what Claude had to say. Here's his question, and it's regarding uh, Granite Xhaka, I believe. Yeah, he says, is Unai Emery right to block talent, right to block young talent, sorry, for a player who keeps costing us points with major errors? And I'm assuming that he's talking about Granite Xhaka. Claude, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but I think... For me, you know, I don't think that Granit Xhaka is as bad as everybody makes him out to be. I think that there are some attributes there that can be particularly useful. I've spoken in the past about the fact that he brings something slightly different to the team, to everybody else. Doesn't necessarily mean that he's faultless. Of course it doesn't. He makes lots of mistakes. Um, but for me, Granit Xhaka will always be picked in that team. And, and, and I understand why a lot of you don't. Um, and again, I totally accept that side of the argument too. But what I want to know is why you don't criticise the manager who picks this guy every week, the manager who's made this guy the captain. Now, that's not directed at Claude because Claude does criticise the manager. But, you know, if you're one of those people who constantly criticise Granit Xhaka but refuses to criticise Unai Emery, I don't understand that because... You're ultimately allowing Emery a free ride again because he is the man who picks him. He's the first name on the team sheet week in, week out. There's no question about it. When Granit Xhaka is fit, Granit Xhaka plays. And more often than not nowadays, he is wearing the captain's armband. So I think that the likes of Willock, um, you know, Nelson, etc., they've all got bags and bags of talent. But I think Unai Emery recognises that he needs to get Arsenal back in the Champions League. Unai Emery recognises that he's not going to have forever to do this. And I think often you'll see managers stick with the experienced players, the more experienced players, because more often than not, they're a little bit more consistent. And I think over the course of the season, a Granit Xhaka will probably be more consistent than some of those young players. And I think that's why he gets in the team. Um, Unai Emery is someone who, who clearly likes the player. And, you know... You can't say that he doesn't give a chance to youth because he gave Matteo Genduzzi so much game time last season, having come in as a complete unknown. He's brought players into the squad from the under-23s. He, he clearly has that side to his management. But I think when it comes to you know the crunch and when push becomes shove, Unai Emery will more often than not stick with those experienced players because he will probably feel that he knows what he's going to get out of them. And, and you know, whether it's good or bad, and in Granit Xhaka's case, a lot of the time it is bad, I think Unai Emery will, uh, will stick with him. And, uh, you know, whether you, you agree or disagree with that approach, that's another matter. But I, I believe that Unai Emery will stick with Granit Xhaka. He'll persist with him. Um, uh, there's no question about that in my mind. Now, another question comes uh, from Melvin Marks. Uh, big hello to Melvin, longtime supporter of the podcast, always uh, gets involved and uh, really, really appreciate that. He says, I understand that due to injuries, our manager hasn't been able to select his favoured defensive lineup. My worry is that come October, he might not know his best midfield or forward line when everybody has been available from day one. I think that the fact that Unai Emery doesn't know his best team, doesn't know his best formation, um, you know, it is a real, real problem. Uh, and people will underplay it and people will say, oh, but it's good that he tinkers. It's good that he changes uh, according to the opponent. It's good that he looks at our opponents and, and, and that dictates what he does because Arsene Wenger never used to do that. That's the common argument that I hear from people. But have the results improved enough 
to warrant the tinkering? In my opinion, no. And that's what you've got to look at. That what tinkering does is it does, you know, allow you to set up better maybe for certain games and to set up in a more effective way against certain opponents. But what it also does is it unsettles. Um, it, it affects continuity. And as a team, you cannot possibly know your job inside out if every week your job changes. And, and an example and a manager that people always... Uh, you know, look at as a benchmark at the moment is Jurgen Klopp. Now, Jurgen Klopp came in at Liverpool and lots of you will say he didn't do that well at the start, etc. He came in in October in his first season. And whilst, you know, the results were up and down, I think Liverpool finished seventh that year after an awful start um, under Brendan Rodgers, if I'm not mistaken. I, I think that what you did see from Klopp was signs of what he was trying to do. You saw signs of the press. You saw signs of the system, the 4-3-3 that he wanted to play. And he may not have necessarily had the place to do that, but he stuck with it and he made sure he embedded the system. And, and bit by bit, he's managed to replace players and uh, take the components that he needs from other clubs and put them in. And now he has a really, really good team on his hands. What worries me about Unai Emery is not the fact that Arsenal finished fifth last season. It's not the fact that Arsenal lost the Europa League final, which is a one-off game. It's the fact that I cannot see the plan I cannot see the vision now if Unai Emery stuck to a certain way of playing you know made sure that uh, Arsenal knew what they were doing from week to week and then just didn't have the players to pull that off I'd, I'd be more patient because I'd be sitting here saying right I understand what he wants to do but I also understand that he doesn't have the players to do that necessarily but the lack of vision the lack of plan for me, is a real concern. I'm not saying that you shouldn't be adaptable in games. Of course you should. You should always be adaptable. It's a huge thing in modern football. But you should have a plan A. And there is no plan A at Arsenal at the moment. What is the plan A? If anyone could tell me in the comments, what is Unai Emery's plan A? I, I want to hear it because I've been watching Arsenal under Unai Emery for an entire season and a few games now. And I still don't see it. And lots of people don't see it. But people prefer to keep quiet. They don't want to challenge the manager because of the time he's been there. And I get that. You shouldn't be going there with Emery out banners or abusing the guy. But there's nothing wrong with our supporters as paying supporters of the club. There's nothing wrong with asking questions. And that's all I'm doing. I'm asking questions of Unai Emery. Let me know your thoughts, of course, in the comments section below. Now, we're going to move on and touch on uh, something that will interest lots of you. There will be lots of you that aren't interested as well. But we're going to talk about the FIFA ratings. Now, Arsenal's FIFA ratings have been released. Uh, the game is due to come out at the end of the month, I believe. Uh, lots of you are players. Um, I play it from time to time with my friends. Used to play it a lot by myself, but uh, I don't want to say I've grown out of it because I haven't. I just don't really have the time anymore. Um, but just to touch on some of the ratings, some of the notable ones, Aubameyang, 88. Now, these ratings are, of course, out of 100. Lacazette, 86. Uh, Leno, Socrates and Ozil all on 84. Socrates, 84. Bit surprised about that one. Uh, Pepe, Luiz are both on 83. Torreira is on 82. And interestingly, Sead Kalasinac is at 79. That is three better than Kieran Tierney, who's at 76. And I know these ratings update, don't they? Because if you have your game connected to the internet, uh, you get form updates and things like that throughout the season, which is great. Um, but yeah, just, just interesting reading. Let me know what you think about those in the comments section too. Don't forget to hit like, hit subscribe, hit share, leave us a comment. I want to know your thoughts on the things I've mentioned. And if you want to get your hands on one of these bad boys, it's a Chronicles AFC t-shirt. You can do so. All you need to do is DM us on Twitter at Chronicles underscore AFC. Their 1099 postage is free and we can get those to you in support of the podcast. Um, also, uh, what was the other thing I was going to say? Completely gone bank. Uh, also, the fans phone in is back on Tuesday. We'll be looking back at the Watford game, of course. Uh, Monday, we'll be releasing our review. And Tuesday, we'll be giving you guys the opportunity from 9.30 onwards to have your say uh, on the game at Watford and anything Arsenal, in fact. So please, please do join us. And the best caller on the evening uh, will be voted for you guys in the comments. And that caller will receive a free T-shirt uh, from us. Uh, and we've got some more coming, some different colours, etc., etc. So we'll be keeping you posted on all that too. 
Don't forget this uh, podcast is sponsored by loserpool.com. Don't forget to head over there. There's a new pool starting this week. Your opportunity to win a £1,000 and to enter... It's completely free, so you'd be silly not to. Uh, it's a great game. Do check it out, and I'm going to leave you with a short message from our sponsors as we say goodbye. So until tomorrow, take care.